Hi, I'd like to do another practice problem with you during the three steps. So this is when you have an acid and a base uh, that are going to react. Remember, this isn't with water, okay? Um, so you have, an, in this case, a weak acid, I want to give you a different example, with a strong base. Uh, those are going to 100% react. That strong base will rip through that weak acid. Um, and here's the key. You're going to find that the final moles for the reactants are zero which means we live here. It is a really special spot. Um, it's called the equivalence point. I'm going to start with my acetic acid. That will be at about a pH of three. I'm going to add drop, 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 drop of the NaOH. And when the exact moles of the acid and the base, when those are the same, when they're the same, so the hydrogen mole equals the hydroxide mole, mole of acid equals mole of base, that's the equivalence point. When you're at that situation, you have to do the three steps, okay? The three steps are, Number one, initial final moles. Number two, dilution of the product. And number three, an ice table for the product plus water. Um, so initial final moles. You always have to do initial final moles if you're given an acid and a base. And again, this isn't um, one species reacting with water. It's going to be an acid and a base that react. So here we've got our strong base that's going to rip through that weak acid. So let's go ahead and do initial final moles. So we'll have I and F. Now, I've given some information. This is really all the problem says. Um, we are given 15 mils each of a 0.12 molar sodium hydroxide and a 0.12 molar acetic acid. And it says, what's the final pH of this solution? So uh, what I did was I set this up. Um, our molarity for each of these is 0.12 moles per liter. We are given a volume of 0.015. Sorry, let's put this down, but that's liters. It's 15 mils, so I just divided by 1,000 and got the liters, we multiply, and that is going to give us 1.8 times 10 to the three moles. 10 to the negative three, excuse me, moles. So that's how many moles I have of each of these species to react. So that's initial, okay? I'm going to have 1.8 times 10 to the minus three moles of acid, 1.8 times 10 to the minus three moles of base. Now I want to, you to picture this. I'm going to have a little flask that has 15 mils of this 0.12 molar acetic acid. Well inside of that is floating exactly 1.8 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of acetic acid. And then I have a second little beaker and in this beaker there are 15 mils of a 0.12 molar um, sodium hydroxide which means I have exactly 0.18 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of hydroxide. Now notice something I did. This is sodium hydroxide, and I just wrote hydroxide. Remember, sodium is a neutral ion, and so I don't even write it in the reaction. It will not impact the pH of the solution. So I just write the hydroxide. Okay, water is a dash. Water is not included in our equilibrium expression because it's a liquid. Um, and I have zero of the acetate ion that's produced. So those are going to react one mole to one mole. Well, I have exactly 1.8 times 10 to the minus three. We'll react with the same amount, one to one, 1.8 times 10 to the minus three, minus three. Those will 100% react. So I get zero and zero. Notice one mole of acetic acid, one mole of hydroxide produces one mole of acetate ion. So if I have 1.8 times 10 to the minus three, it's going to produce 1.8 times 10 to the minus three moles. Now be careful on that. Students tend to add those and do, oh, 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3. No, it's not 1 plus 1 equals 2. It's 1 mole, 1 mole produces 1 mole. So 1.8, 1.8. Okay, so I've taken these two beakers, 15 mils, 15 mils, poured it together. The acid base, 100% perfect stoichiometric ratio. They react. And what's left in here is going to be water and that acetate ion. So here's my clue, I have to do the three steps, those zeros. Because at the final concentration, I have no reactants left over. It means we had the exact moles of acid and base. Woo, I'm at the equivalence point. So we're going to have to do three steps. I've already done step one. So now let's do step two. This is going to be the dilution of that product. I've got to find pH. This is the only thing in that beaker now. It's going to be that acetate ion and it will partially react with the water because it's a weak base. It will go into equilibrium. So in order to find pH, I have to do an ice table. And in order to do an ice table, I need molarity, not moles. So that's the dilution part of this, is that we poured two solutions together and we now have a larger volume. 
So let's take this, we're going to have 1.8 times 10 to the minus three moles of that acetate ion and divide it by, okay, what's my new volume? Right down here, 15, sorry, 15 mils each. 15 plus 15, let's write it down here, 15 plus 15 equals 30 mils. So let's divide that by a thousand and we're going to get 0 0.03 liters, 0 0.03 liters. Um, and when I divide that, we are going to get a concentration of 0 0.060 molar acetate ion. Okay, so I now know the molarity of this acetate ion in the new solution. When I poured the 50 mils together as a base reacted, all I have left is the acetate ion floating in water, and that will partially react with water. So now we can go to step three, and that is create the ice table. So I have my acetate ion. You take that product and you will add it to water because that's the only thing in the solution that will react. So we add it to water. Now remember, this is a weak base, so it will only partially react. This will go into equilibrium. Beautiful equal forward and reverse rates. This is the base that's going to accept a hydrogen, so that will become acetic acid. Plus that acts as the acid is going to donate the hydrogen. That will be hydroxide. Really quick reminder, there's your base, acid. The base produces the conjugate acid. Acid produces the conjugate base. If you need to watch my video under acid base equilibrium playlist, go to conjugate acid, conjugate base. Okay, so now it's going to be an ice table. Let's go ahead and set it up. I, C, E. So my initial concentration, all right, this reacted, <gasps> produced the acetate, that concentration right there, what we did for our dilution is going to be 0 0.06 molar. Water is not a part of the equilibrium expression, so it's dashes. I'll have zero um, acetic acid and zero hydroxide. Remember that acetic acid right there was consumed. This is going to be new acetic acid that's produced when that acetate ion partially reacts with the water. Okay, we're going to um, lose an amount of that reactant, and we're going to gain an amount of each of the products. And it's going to follow the one mole, one mole, one mole, those molar coefficients. E, really easy, just add I plus C, 0 0.06 minus X, zero plus X is X, zero plus X is X. Okay, now we can plug this into our equilibrium expression. Um, so I've got to find my K value. Now be so careful on this. Um, do I find Ka or Kb? Well, you look at what's next to uh, the water, and that will tell you. I have a base next to water, which means I need Kb. This is a base reaction. So Kb uh, for acetic acid is going to be 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Let's go ahead and write our equilibrium expression. We're going to have Kb equals concentration of acetic acid times the concentration of hydroxide divided by our reactant, which is the acetate, oops, is the acetate ion, 3O2 minus. Okay, now I can plug in all of my numbers. I need to do that right down here for you. Um, so we're going to have Kb 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10 equals, so X and X, that will be X squared for those products right there, divided by 0 0.06 minus x. So now we have an algebra problem. We're going to use our trick. Um, this six would be 10 to the minus two, and this um, Kb is 10 to the minus 10. Remember, I need a factor of 100 difference. Well, I not only have two zeros, but I have eight zeros difference, which means this x is negligible. I love it when we can take that out simply means if I subtract the value of x from 0.06, that x is so small that when I subtract it, it will just round to 0.06. It doesn't change it for all intent and purpose. Um, so let's multiply both sides by the 0.06. So times 0.06 times 0.06. And we are going to get x squared equals, let's see what I got here, uh, 3.36 times 10 to the minus 11. How do you get rid of a square? Square root it. Square root both sides, and x will equal 5.80 times 10 to the minus six. Wow, 
So we now have found the concentrations at equilibrium. Finally, we had this reaction happen. We had the acetate ion produced. The acetate ion then reacted partially with water because it's a weak base. And here's finally what we have at equilibrium. That we're going to have five times 10 to the minus six of the hydroxide and the acetic acid. Now we're going to have 0.06 of the acetate because that X is so small. When Again, when you subtract it, it rounds to 0 0.06 for sig figs. Now the question was, what is the pH? Check it out. OH is X. So if I take the concentration of OH, do the negative log, we find POH. Let me write that down. POH equals the negative log of hydroxide right there. So let's go ahead and plug it in. This will equal negative log of 5.8 times 10 to the minus six. When we put that in our calculator, we are going to get, and I'm going to write this explicitly, POH equals 5.24. Now be so careful. We found POH because we took the negative log of hydroxide, but we want pH. So there's one more tiny step on this. Remember, pH, plus POH equals 14. So I'm going to plug in that POH, 5.24, subtract it from 14. Whew. Finally, here's our answer. pH will equal, what is this going to be? 7, no, 8.76. 8.76, nice, nice. It's going to be slightly basic. Okay, wonderful work. If you haven't watched the first video, um, watch the video that says acid and base at equivalence point three steps. This was just an add on another practice problem. So if you if you didn't watch the first one, you want to see another problem, go back to acid base equilibrium and watch that first video. You should feel so good. This is like a page worth of work. Ugh, you're doing awesome. You can do this. Good job. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.